Uh, the posters that advertised this demonstration were quite carefully designed not to actually say what it was. Um, a lot of you have already guessed and probably words got round, but uh, for those of you who don't know yet, this substance is bismuth. Uh, bismuth is element number 83 on the periodic table and it's by far my favourite element. Um, there's quite a lot to say about it. Uh, it's the main ingredient in Pepto-Bismol. I say the main ingredient, it's the active ingredient in Pepto-Bismol, uh, which is why I said on the posters that it can cure indigestion, because it, it actually can. Elements which are near to each other in the periodic table tend to be very similar in their properties. So you'll notice next to bismuth on the periodic table there is lead, which is, as we all know, is pretty toxic. Uh, there's antimony, which is quite unusual uh, stuff, but that's also very toxic. And polonium, which was actually used in an assassination attempt uh, at one point, uh, is also radioactive. Uh, so it's surrounded by toxic elements, but nevertheless bismuth is considered pretty much non-toxic. Um, and in fact is used in Pepto-Bismol to cure indigestion. Uh, it has a fairly low melting point. It melts at about 271 degrees C, um, which is what I'm doing here. Hopefully it won't take much longer to dissolve away. It has 83 protons in its nucleus, so it's a very, very large atom. And as atoms get larger and larger, they get less and less stable. And as it happens, bismuth is the biggest atom you can have that isn't unstable. Bismuth is the heaviest non-radioactive element. If you go one step up further, you get the polonium, which is radioactive. And anything beyond there is radioactive. Um, it's very, very dense, just like lead. So it's incredibly heavy. I've been passing around a sample. Um, if you'd like to pass it to the people who haven't yet uh, had a go with it, you'll notice how dense it is. Another very unusual thing about bismuth is that, like water, which is also quite unusual, um, the solid floats on the liquid. I'm going to put this piece on the top and it should float. There you go, it's floating. And it's actually very rare for a substance to do that. Most substances, the solid will sink in the liquid. But uh, antimony and bismuth, I think arsenic and water also, will all float. So that's quite rare. Now what I'm hoping to do here is recrystallize it to get uh, these beautiful coloured crystals like I showed you on the poster. Um, so what I'm going to do is pour this out carefully so that the oxide layer which was formed on the top, you can see there's a kind of a skin on the surface, uh, doesn't come with it. And then I'll pour it into these containers here and I'll let them half solidify so they'll be solid from the bottom upwards and then I'll pour the top off. And what's left over should be just like those crystals in the poster. So I think the first thing I'll do is turn off the Bunsen. And then very carefully, I'll pour these out. Almost looks like mercury. Yeah, well, it's just like mercury, it's a molten metal. The difference is, is that this one has to be heated up to 271, whereas mercury melts at negative 39. So we'll wait a little while, uh, and when I judge that the time is right, I will pour off the tops. Um, it forms several layers of bismuth oxide on the surface, and you get some interesting optical uh, uh, effects from it, um, based on interference, which Mark Spooner here can teach you all about. Okay, so I'm going to pour one of these off and see if it's ready. I think it is. Yes, and we've got some beautiful crystals on there. So bear in mind it's cooling down and it's very, very hot, but if you'd like to take a peek at it, you can. I'll pour this one off too. You may even notice the colours changing as it goes as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is repeat the torsional balance section of this demonstration because we didn't get a very good angle of it 
in the first place. So here is our torsional balance and at this end here we have some clay which is just a counterweight and at this end there is a crystal of our diamagnetic bismuth um, and I'm going to put a, a rare earth magnet very close to the crystal and it should be repelled and you should be able to see it this time. And although it's very subtle, you can see there is a movement there.